Okay, start. Uh, so there was some uh, uh, small left over from lecture, some second lecture, which I, I want to explain. It's uh, comparison uh, between Betty and the RAM, uh, isomorphism and uh, wall crossing structure for the case of one forms, not functions, but the forms. Yeah, so uh, what is the setup? I have as usual smooth algebraic variety over complex numbers. I have a divisor with normal crossing in X, so it more like I consider chains with boundary on D, that's the point. And then I can see the closed one form on X. Uh, so I have closed algebraic one form. And uh, I want to search some kind of beta in the RAM homology. And mm. before uh, uh, I think, uh, let me choose some computification, which ex one can easily show to exist. Algebraic computification, uh, X bar, which is smooth. And I uh, said that uh, complement to X is. Uh, mm, mm, uh, mm, it's contains some divisor. It's it's uh, 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 divisors which consists of three parts. It's again normal crossing divisor. Uh, horizontal logarithmic and vertical. I explained in, in the second and said that d total, which is uh, take closure of D union with this uh, three things is again normal closing divisor. Uh, so in X bar I have four types of boundaries and the property the property are the following uh, uh, form alpha extends to uh, mm, Mm. <coughs> uh, kind of open part of horizontal part. I think it's so the horizontal place where uh, to the edge open, kind of open part of the horizontal. Or equivalently, I just write it form done by same letter. Alpha will be considered as a form on x bar minus uh, logarithmic and vertical part. Uh, and uh, near uh, these things, the form is not defined. It should have the following uh, uh, kind of in analytic topology. Uh, form will look the following. Alpha will be some regular form without any poles, plus uh, some linear combination of d log z i the product of the i is equal to zero is equation for logarithmic part of my form of uh, my divisor and c i are just some non zero complex numbers and plus uh, uh, second part will be near uh, vertical part when you think in terms of function it will be product over some other variables dj to some power nj multiplied by 1 plus o1, uh, uh, where a uh, product of j zj is equal to 0 is equation for the vertical, and nj are uh, strictly positive integer numbers. Yeah, so, so one can uh, make such picture at infinity. Mm. Then one have uh, then one can consider a coherent shift on x bar, which I think it will be vector bundle. It's kind of omega f, uh, uh, which will be the f defined as the following. You consider a shift of uh, forms 
in uh, which are uh, log forms uh, on x bar relative to all things uh, and vanishing on uh, d bar. So vanishing means it's uh, this complex and uh, such that omega which alpha belongs to the same uh, uh, story. It's kind of extension of uh, the complexity. Which alpha, yeah. Oh. yeah so it's, and this is nice coherent shift. And one can prove the theorem. Uh, kind of, uh, uh, it's essentially Claude Sabar uh, result for case when device is empty of uh, when there's no maybe logarithmic, uh, when you have only vertical part. Uh, in this case, uh, um, is that if you consider a hypercomology of X bar with a risky topology and with this shift omega f and with differential H bar plus H alpha, it's closed under both differentials, uh, then it does not jump. at all, yeah, for all h bar. And can one also put constant in front of the alpha or not? Ah, no, no, no the, if there's no logarithmic part, one can also put constant along the alpha and also get it to zero, yeah. If there's no logarithmic part, it's some additional story which I will not talk now. Yeah. If d log is empty, uh, then uh, uh, one can put two constants. Which are cannot be simultaneously equal to Could be, could be simultaneously equal to zero. Could be. Yes, yes, yeah. Equal to rank of uh, cohomology of x risky with omega f as well, yeah. One can put both constants to be zero. If this, if the if logarithmic part is trivial. If, yeah, yeah, that's the sex degeneration, um, uh, which happens. But uh, I will not talk about this story, and I will not give, explain to you the proof of the theorem. Uh, yeah, or, or maybe I will explain in some simple case uh, what's the main idea, uh, uh, what is, let's consider this a uh, really simple case when d total is, is empty. X X bar. You can have just closed variety and, and closed holomorphic one form. Uh, why why is this uh, rank of cohomology doesn't jump? Uh, or maybe maybe I should be a little bit optim no maybe maybe I remove it it's, um, for case of one form. It's remove this. Uh, let, let's explain me this situation. Uh, what we calculate. In this case, we can see we, we, we have a line bundle, which is O, with flat connection, D plus alpha. Let's put H bar equal to 1. We have a flat connection on, on line bundle. And uh, here we calculate this drum homology of this uh, line bundle, uh, homology of uh, X with, with flat connection using the RAM model. And then uh, there is a uh, well-known sign that uh, uh, st story kind of uh, by Simpson and others, yes, that uh, 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 there exists unique up to uh, uh, constant, because it's simple things, uh, harmonic metric uh, on this uh, line bundle, respect to flat connection. And then you can identify the rank homology with, ho with Higgs cohomology. Uh, so, so it means that it gives you a, some line bundle, another line bundle, holomor holomorphic line bundle, E with a Higgs field, phi which belongs to sections of X and 
endomorphism E times one form. Uh, and then uh, you consider different cohomology, consider um, uh, Dalbo cohomology, which will be hyper cohomology of, of X with either analytic or the risky. Uh, then consider E tensoring forms with differential acting by uh, Higgs field. Yeah. And then the ram cohomology are equal to, uh, to this thing. Uh, the reason is essentially if consider d bar plus phi, uh, and here get d plus alpha uh, operator, and take com com commutant anti commutant, uh, because we get uh, the same identity as the usual uh, Hodge theory. The drum, uh, now that's a proof uh, of, uh, no, that's, that's a general fact for harmonic metric. But what is harmonic metric here? For this local system, harmonic metric is very simple. It's constant metric. And norm of one at any point is equal one. It's constant metric in this trivialization. Uh, why it's harmonic? When consider uh, uh, flat trivialization, we will locally write a, a is differential of some function f, locally. And then the metric uh, in this trivialization will be, uh, metric will be um, matrix exponent of f squared. Yeah? And then consider logarithm of this guy. It's kind of one by one matrix, Hermitian matrix, depending on point on my manifold. We consider logarithm of these things, take dd bar, we get definitely zero. So it's harmonic. Yeah. Yeah. So what is the class in the commutator? Anti anti-commutator. What is the condition of harmonic that you Yeah, there is some notion of harmonicity for me for metrics on flat bundles. Yes. And in particular for rank one bundle it means that if you consider uh, flat sections, consider uh, logarithm of norm, you get pluriharmonic function. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, but it's also for arbitrary rank, for, you can see for local system of arbitrary rank on Keller manifold, one can see some notion of uh, harmonic metrics. Yeah. And then there is a general thing that uh, the ram cohomology, in this case, local system, are equal, one can associate it by some formula, some holomorphic bundle plus Higgs field. Another bundle. Another bundle, yeah. You have another bundle, and such that, uh, he, uh, he, uh, kind of Higgs cohomology equal to the Ram cohomology because of this identity for Laplacians. Just but the identity compares things with different bundles. For different bundles, yeah, but they, you can identify as a C infinity bundles. And, uh, yeah. and then you have identities as well. Yeah. yeah, which shows that the cohomology is the same, yeah. It's kind of generalization of usual Hodge theory. theory. Yes, yes, yeah. It's on compact manifold here. Yeah, but here, uh, what happens? So we get this uh, 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 another bundle and some Higgs field. Then we can make cal calculations. And uh, uh, first of all, Higgs field, because it's a line bundle, it's the same as holomorphic one form, because endomorphism of line bundle is constant. And phi is, can, I think it's equal to uh, maybe plus minus, maybe there's some sm small constant, but form alpha may be divided by two, something like this. Yeah, so it's proportional to form alpha. Line bundle is not trivial. But line bundle, one can also identify, because it's, it will be line bundle of rank zero, or degree zero, so it will have unitary connections. U1 connection, flat U1 connection. And um, it will be a kind of holomorphic bundle associated with flat U1 connection. In flat U1 connection, you take something like I times maybe imaginary part of alpha, maybe again divided by two. You get closed purely imaginary one form uh, up to some constant. Yeah, so you get some bundle with some flat connection, uh, but the bundle is, you see, it's non trivial. How we proceed? Uh, this, uh, when calculate this cohomology, uh, it will be uh, in, in analytic topology, it will be concentrated. The complex will be acyclic outside of zeros of phi locally. So it's direct sum of contribution of neighborhoods of zeros of alphas. And then zeros of alpha 
called Z. It will be some union of some connected components. And this Dalbo homology take direct sum over uh, B, consider hyper homology of some neighborhood. What did you wrote uh, in the last line? Connect. No, the last line of the, you are holomorphic and then somewhere below the Holomorphic bundle associated with a flat U1 connection given by a trivial bundle with, with this carriage connection form. Now, yeah, so now you have considered neighborhood of this ZB and you repeat the same story, get E and some X and Phi. But uh, my form uh, is uh, on ZB, uh, locally is uh, exact. It vanishes on ZB. It can be represented as differential of some function near ZB. It's the same with the imaginary part. So you see that near, uh, near ZB, uh, this bundle, uh, this flat connection is, <laughs> uh, 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 this flat connection is uh, trivial, monogram is trivial. So E is identified with O, with trivial bundle in some canonical way. Okay, so, so you see that you can replace by usual story and you get cohomology uh, descriptions as forms. So you, uh, you just multiply by alpha. Okay, so that's... Uh, uh Excuse me, for the general case, you, you also use a harmonic metric? Or? Yeah, the same harmonic metric, but then one should use Michizuki <laughs> theory uh, analysis how one can, should do with uh, irregular singularities and so on. Yeah, so it's uh, uh, so that's, uh, uh, that's the thing. So, so you get this commodity do not jump for all h bar, and I claim it's 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 not the ram commodity which we are interested in. It's slightly different from. Uh, 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 when we calculate integrals, we integrate something like the ramp homology, uh, uh, depending on h bar and alpha, so it will be something like hyper homology of x without compactifications, consider forms with hd plus alpha. Uh, mm. You consider open part and consider homology on open part. You compare with closed part to take dark image and you see that something will go wrong, but only for uh, uh, problem, uh, it's different only for special values of h bar, which are uh, union of i, get ci, the ci are, uh, where, where to, yeah, uh, ci are uh, these non-zero numbers, and I consider ci divided by positive integers. For this, for, um, for such values of Planck constant, you don't get uh, isomorphism gets something, some sm small problem. Uh, yeah, I want to compare this uh, drum homology with Betty homology. And for Betty, I just essentially already wrote you what, what I need. Uh, I have Slightly different. Yeah, uh, uh, it's not it's not isomorphic to the ramp homology of open variety. Maybe to maybe put uh, minus. Yeah, maybe just uh, maybe I put a thing like this. Forms vanishing on D and. Uh, yeah, that's what we're interested in integrals. Um, and uh, it's not isomorphic for this, uh, this exceptional values of h bar. Okay, so now we write z uh, union of alpha is, okay, just repeat. Okay, z is zeros of alpha. So you are in the general case or you are simplifying assumption on the divisor? No, no, no. no I mean, in general case. Yeah, so now consider zeros of alpha. So this theorem doesn't apply to the So Yeah, it's, sorry? That theorem does not apply. 
Yeah. yeah, because in in, in Sabar there's no logarithmic divisors. Yes, it's yes, it's. Residues, yeah, it's good. For, yeah, it's residues, yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's zero. So false. Is it is a compact subset because of our picture of what in x bar minus d log plus the vertical. It's really compact. Uh, and uh, uh, then we can write as a union of connected components. It should be uh, uh, mm. and as, as I just already told you, near each uh, for any b, near z b in analytic topology, there exists unique function f b, uh, holomorphic function, so that f b restricted maybe to reduce divisor is zero, to reduce uh, sub-scheme sub sub is zero, and dfb is equal to alpha. Mm. Oh, yeah, so, so you locally represent as a critical points of some cano absolute canonical function, and then I define uh, beta realization, which depends on my this component of critical point set and Planck constant, uh, which will be, yeah, I'll write you formal definition, you get R gamma of ZB, and then you take, yeah, if you don't know this notation, then can it really help, yeah, you get shift of vanishing cycles, you divide by function of beta divided by H bar, and then of what? Yeah, so you consider, uh, yeah, so first you consider uh, uh, constant shift uh, on x minus mm, all divisor restricted to the neighborhood. Then you do what? You extend. Uh, by factorial to D, yeah, so it's responsible for chains with boundary or commodity of pair, uh, but then you should extend to some st still some other la larger story, x embedded to x bar minus this divert d log and d vertical, now extend, extend by star, yeah, yeah that's uh, uh, Comology, yeah, so it's in, uh, roughly if you don't have the things at infinity, you consider Comology the shift of finishing cycles. I don't need to take care of behavior of infinity. And then uh, I'll say conjecture because I didn't check. Uh, uh, should be serum, I didn't check all details. Mm. Uh, is uh, mm. the following uh, that uh, one should have comparison isomorphism between beta and the RAM homology, uh, namely for H bar, uh, which is doesn't lie to the some countable union of rays. race in C, uh, namely uh, race are given by conditions that argument of H bar is equal to argument of integral of alpha of some uh, chain where gamma is a pass in uh, uh, where mm. ah Sorry, I just was maybe a little bit. Uh, 
yeah, was a little bit uh, 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 careless here uh, just before going on. I can say not just zeros of alpha, but zeros of alpha and of all its restrictions. intersection of components of d bar and d horizontal. Sorry, yeah, because it has, comp yeah, I have many, many strata and I want to see st vanishing on all, all strata as well. Yeah, the rest is the same. Uh, yeah. yeah, so uh, now I have some kind of bad direction for alpha, uh, for h bar, namely I consider uh, mm, pass in x bar minus d log and d vertical uh, uh, connecting uh, point with ends in uh, uh, belong to this z some bad points and consider arguments of such things when integrals are not zero so I get countably many uh, for multi class get countably many numbers and which could be everywhere dense uh, on the plane. And then the claim that for h bar, which is, which is kind of not bad, you get isomorph, you get canonical isomorphism, comparison isomorphism between what? You consider uh, this uh, hypercomology of uh, exactly these things, which maybe I denote kind of h, kind of maybe modified. Uh, uh, the ram h bar of x alpha looks like this uh, a slightly modified sink mm. so it's the ram version will be isomorphic to the direct sum of all connected components of these guys beta bar transient by c um, ah but here will be some interesting point here I, I want to put two different Planck constants here Maybe I put here kind of h prime, and here it's h bar. And what is h modified? Uh, h modified, it's this uh, is definition, uh, this uh, hypercomology with this nice com complex. Uh, now you see, the co because the ram homology jump, uh, and uh, if you don't do modified for this bad values of h bar, but this commode uh, do not jump in h, h bars. They all stay the same because uh, it looks only local contribution for each critical points. Yeah, so I get these things. And what are h h prime? It should be kind of holomorphic in h prime and in uh, h prime and h prime should belong to the f s certain disk uh, kind of open disk whose zero is in direction h bar. So yeah, so it looks kind of bizarre things. Maybe I can say that if you go to inverse variable, uh, mm -hmm. so maybe we can first write formulas. So it means that argument of h bar minus argument. So this is homomorphic. What's the statement? Ah, so no, the, the statement is not isomorphic. It's statement constru and hidden construction that uh, what is that's an isomorphic. It's an integration of a uh, of a left shift symbols. Uh, for, all, for all h primes which belong to something, you have isomorphism. Yes, one can have some isomorphism, which is homomorphic. Yeah, uh, and um, h bar should be have suf uh, sufficiently close argument and real part of h bar prime inverse times h bar bigger than some constant yeah so mm, maybe one can go better to inverse variables you say get h1 h prime inverse 
belongs to half plane, uh, which goes in direction uh, h bar inverse. Yeah. So what are you given h? I have two numbers. I get h is uh, it's not uh, not uh, not on bad uh, not on bad rays, but h bar is could be some small deformation of h. Uh, H bars uh, uh, a small deformation and H bar should be sufficiently small. Yeah, and H prime. H prime, H prime, yeah, H prime, yeah. Uh, um, kind of an inverse, if make inversion, you from the circle get half plane. You can see the inverse of the numbers belonging to the circle, which uh, oh. whose boundary contains zero, get half plane, yeah. Mm. Yeah, so it's a pretty abstract story. Uh, so why do you need each bar, each side? Uh, because the integrals will still converge. Now, I want to say that integrals which I defined have analytic continuation to some efficient uh, uh, domains. Mm. Yeah, actually, uh, what is really, really nice in this formulation uh, that this bad exceptional sets are completely disappear from the formulation. I can, I can modify uh, the rank homology a little bit uh, using complexification. And global beta homology are not equal to this direct sum exactly with the same exceptions. So they, this, uh, the whole thing is kind of cancel and one have very clean result. And now I just show you kind of basic example. One can really go to the very end and understand everything. So x is c star with coordinate so x, small x. Form alpha will be 1 over x minus 1 times dx. And uh, this boundary divisor will be 0. So we're interested in this connection. And um, of course, the computation have only one computation, CP1. Mm, and uh, one point will be, uh, the logarithmic will be zero, because form has a logarithmic poles at zero, and has a high order pole at infinity. Okay. And maybe in there's no horizontal part. Okay. So we get this uh, computation. And a generator of, of this cohomology of, of each modified whatever the ram h bar x alpha is a uh, form uh, dx over x. That's called volume form. It's easy to see that it's generator. So a uh, 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 set of zeros of my forms is just one point. It just point x equal to 1. Form vanishes exactly at one point. Yeah, yeah. So, so in this case, Kamolja are one dimensional. And uh, if h bar is positive real number, Uh, then uh, the generator of uh, it's kind of Morse point, and uh, you get only one left shift symbol, and left shift symbol will be positive x sitting uh, a real part of real line sitting in x, and on this line it contains it's it's some things which goes through point one. Uh, and uh, on this uh, uh, on this symbol, uh, we'll get a function, maybe called f1 of x, which is equal to log x plus one minus x. Uh, uh, what is nice about this function? This function at this point one, which is belongs to z, is equal to zero, and differential of my form is form alpha. If our functions form alpha, yeah, so it's kind of normalize the function to have critical value zero at, at my point. And now what I integrate, 
just by uh, definition I get E uh, again modified in different sense uh, in my sense of first lecture maybe get kind of E plus of H bar will be kind of the general prescription was the following we take uh, 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 mm, square root of two, two, two page, uh, oh no, two, pay, uh, two pi h bar, and one is, one is dimension of my manifold. Yeah, so it's uh, this universal formula. Then you integrate from, from zero to plus infinity, exponent of one of h bar f one of x. Yeah, function, uh, what the graph will be of this function? I have this x from zero, one to infinity, and function f, We'll have the graph like this. So it will be go to, go to minus infinity in both ends. So you integrate the things, multiply by volume form. Yeah, this is exactly volume form. So you have this integral. And then you can calculate it very easily. It's gamma s divided by square root of 2 pi by s to power s minus 1 half exponent of minus s and is equal to 1 plus some uh, asymptotic series in s. Ah, sorry, s is I just denote by a, it's h bar inverse. Yeah, so get a kind of stealing formula on things and uh, So this function, uh, it appears in comparison isomorphism between Betty and Deram. And what is nice, is, uh, it's kind of compati compatible with this picture. This function is extends to invertible function. In uh, C minus negative in h bar plane. Uh, so I get function defined only for positive real number. Uh, but uh, uh, by this comparison, isomorphism should go to some bigger disk. But in fact, the disk will, have, will be half plane. And then uh, when I start to rotate it, uh, because my walls will be only here, I, I, I get exactly the complement to negative number. So I get automatically explanation why this thing is invertible from uh, uh, the, uh, this role for this picture, but then one can go to uh, have different uh, domains. Yeah, uh, now consider function E negative of h bar, which is one. You now consider h bar negative number. Again, draw timbal and in calculate integral. And if you calculate integral, you get things related to these things. It's function on uh, uh, complementary picture and now what are bad directions? I says it's what's a bad directions. Uh, bad directions are is imaginary axis. Mm. Uh. Yeah, isomorphism fails, yeah. Uh, um, because uh, you integrate alpha, you can see the periods of my form alpha, and you have only one interesting integral, which is 2 pi i. Yeah? Because residue is 1. So, so this is uh, kind of bad directions, kind of Stokes race. Oh, here, not Stokes, maybe kind of imaginary Stokes race here, and don't have thinks it's uh, mm, er plus and er minus. And uh, I have one function which defines on the one half but extends to larger things, another function defined to another half and def defined extends to another thing. And if we consider jump, 
if h bar belongs to E R plus, uh, then uh, what we see is that. So we use the rule R plus and I. I times R plus. Oh, sorry. I times R plus. I times. If h bar belongs to these things, then uh, you have one function from left hand side and another from right hand side, and they differ by the following things. That's something like a minus is equal to a plus minus exponent of 2 pi i over h bar divided by i plus. And if h bar belongs to minus I, negative part of uh, imaginary axis, then i minus is equal to i plus minus exponent of minus 2 pi i by defined over i plus. And here again, one can understand everything. So first we get is this kind of minus sign, yeah? And this minus, minus sign means, means the following. And kind of x is c star. Get point. It's uh, x is a cylinder topologically. Yeah, it has one zero of my, my point, and uh, there exists essentially one loop connecting with this other, which uh, some gradient line, and this multiplicity. Uh, uh, this thing means that n plus minus gamma zero is equal to minus one. Yeah, so you get one loop, but sign uh, in with sign it contributes to minus one. Think. So it's integer number. It's, we cannot see it's in formula. It's minus one, but it's integer. And what is exponent? Exponent. It's integral uh, two pi i. What is? It's two pi i or minus two pi i. Uh, two pi i is integral of a gamma of a gamma zero of alpha, and minus two pi it's integral of minus gamma zero of alpha. Yeah. So so one can understand all terms in this formula through this comparison isomorphism. Yeah, so, so if, you, if you consider this, uh, yeah, so, so my original left should symbol was something like this, but then it start to rotate, kind of you, you rotate the argument of h bar, start to rotate and you get the same things plus, pl plus union of the circle and this expressed in this formula. Yeah, so it's all the story explains nicely all properties of gamma functions which we know but from general principles, yeah, so. Mm. Okay. Now. Yeah, and what follows, I will s simplify notations as f forget about these divisors, uh, get ignore that they exist, but, uh, uh, just to make notation easier. Uh, so what happens in general? Uh, I have closed one form on some variety x, and uh, uh, then for each uh, non-zero plan constant, I have a, um, mm, uh, two isomorphic things. Yeah, I have H mod modified the RAM, X bar, X alpha, and it's isomorphic to this other stuff, some of beta, kind of beta, com get this comparison. But this thing, it's, uh, mm, it's a holomorphic bundle in uh, H bar, as you can see, but it doesn't have any natural flat connection. No natural connection. Unlike for the case of function we can identify, but here we get really local systems. If we go to better description, get local systems different Monodromy, there's no reasons to identify cohomology. They have just the same rank, but uh, they're not as a So it's a uh, flat connection. And similarly, 
if we get a families, we consider some holomorphic family, x depending on some parameter u, alpha depending on parameter u, uh, where u belongs to some parameter space. Then I get holomorphic bundle on what? On C star, H bar, and your parameter space. No flat connection again. But uh, still one can make a situation when you get some, 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 some part of flat connection. I say that uh, my family is either monodromic If on a total space, if you choose some uh, global one form, it's kind of total space of a family, which fiber to u with fibers of u is with x u, uh, get form which is closed globally. And such, that, and such that alpha u for any u is restriction of alpha global to the fiber. Mm. In this case, if you fix h bar, we get kind of uh, the same periods for one form. We get isomandromic connection. And so we should expect Gauss-Mannin connection in in direction of u. u. Ah, so we get, uh, and what we get, we get a family of uh, flat connections on uh, parameter space, which holomorphically depends on h bar. Ah, so in h bar will be still no connections. So connection will be in, the, in this product space only in this direction. Sorry? Ah, oh, okay. This is a, a definition of. What definition? Definition of is isomonodromic. Isomonodromic, it's actually not a property, it's a data. It's a choice of global one form, which is closed on the total family, whose restriction to its fi fiber is, uh, gives our forms. So the Gauss-Mannin connection is on the type of cohomology you discussed? On, co on, co on, this co on this cohomology, depending on parameters, yeah, we can consider. Yeah. yeah. Mm. But uh, then we have this comparison isomorphism in wall crossing structure. It um, describes jumps, yeah, in uh, comparison isomorphism. Because I have a, uh, some bad H bar when uh, uh, mm, I don't have this isomorphism, so it's defined on open dense subset, and uh, this isomorphism jumps. And in particular, uh, uh, so isomorphism between what? Between sum of beta in pi naught of z, u. Z u is critical points of set, and consider again this cohomology of this uh, z b to u uh, and h bar tensor C, which identified. It's identified maybe in two different ways. If you go through two sides of the wall with h deram, this modified whatever notations I have. Uh, it's uh, from two sides of the wall here, I mean. Uh, 
and then I get automorphism of the space, of uh, the RAM space. And the whole thing is described using um, formalism of uh, wall crossing structure, which I explained last time. We need some graded Lie algebra, local system of graded Lie algebras. On, uh, on uh, again, on my parameter space. Uh, uh, so the Lie algebra will be uh, depend on uh, h bar and u, uh, and graded and grading lattice depend only on u. It will not depend on h bar. Mm. Mm. What will be the gradient lattice? Yeah, that's kind of a tricky story. Uh, it will be a mixture of two uh, things. Uh, mm. It's maybe put better notation. Z u will be zeros of of uh, alpha u. Okay. I want to put up index because low index den denoted by some connected component. Mm. Uh, so. The gradient is the following. If I have a pass, ah, um, just before going on, I have this thing, which is, let's m denote by cardinal number of connected components. It will be something, something isomorphic to z m minus 1, this thing. And it's root lattice of a of series a, a minus 1. It's like I explained for the case of function. You, you, you get it. We should think of them as homology classes of Yeah, it's kind of, it's in quotes, uh, two endpoints of the path. Mm, yeah, so, so you have path connecting two components, you get some vectors either, if, if, can, if uh, component, connect components with B1 and B2, the path then should be vector uh, such thing, or if it contains with itself, it will be zero vector. And um, gamma zero u, it will be homology class of the path. I forget the endpoints, it can be homology class of the path. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, Ah, it looks a little bit excessive uh, uh, grading uh, because uh, in, if you know homology class of the path, uh, then consider the boundary will be h0 of this is 0, you get elements here. But I want to kind of to keep it uh, separately because it will include the case of form uh, and it will be work nicer with the situation. Um, so the central charge h bar will be 1 over h bar of the u. With the u maps from, it's kind of tri uh, trivial, will be trivial on, on, m, on root lattice. And given by integral, and on this gamma 0 u is given by integral of form alpha. Which is well defined. OK. Yeah, so you get uh, Lie algebra with um, graded by things. It's it's actually local system again. Some open part of U when a number of connected components stay the same. Mm. Mm. And what will be this Lie algebra? Uh. Uh, 
Uh, the corresponding uh, um, this algebra will be uh, g h bar u. Uh, will be block diagonal matrices, a kind of endomorphisms of direct sum of uh, this H beta. Maybe it doesn't Russian numbers. Uh, so it's kind of matrix algebra. We can see there's a block matrices because we have di direct sum decomposition, uh, transferred by uh, series in Maybe just kind of mod out by torsion here as well. Sorry, this this group I want to mod out by torsion. Uh, kind of group ring of uh, uh, this uh, of this lattice. Yeah. So this Lie algebra, it's matrix valued functions on a multi-dimensional torus. Uh, obviously graded because uh, each bl block belongs to some uh, uh, grading in root lattice and by some monomial here. Mm. Yeah, so you get this, uh, yeah, so you get, uh, um, one can repeat the story what is wall crossing structure, namely walls will be uh, points in this parameter space when the central charge of some element uh, of gradient lattice is positive real number and then you should associate element sitting in the corresponding subgroup on this wall. So it's a certainty condition. And, uh, but here there's a uh, uh, big difference what I explained in the last talk. Last, in the last talk uh, my uh, Lie algebra was finite dimensional. Now it's infinite dimensional, but each graded component is finite dimensional, but algebra is infinite dimensional. What were, I, I lost a little bit. What was the role of this definition, capital Z U H bar? Where does it appear in this? Cap uh, should I go? Yeah. You wrote something which is like a functional. Ah, it's a functional Z U H bar. Uh, I have a local system of Lie algebras, and I get a local system of. Uh, homomorphism of lattices to C. That's it. I, I just get uh, gradient lattice to C. Ah, the gradient lattice maps to C in some continuous way, depending on. Yes, and how do you grade the endomorphism of the direct sum? Uh, endomorphism of gradient sum you grade by a a a minus minus lattice. Home from one guy to another, it will be difference between two base vectors. Yeah, so it's uh, kind of uh, such thing. Yeah, but you see this algebra is infinite dimensional and one should take some care about it. So this wall crossing, I, I defined uh, what uh, some properties of wall crossing structure on specific kind of slice. I consider C star multiplied by some specific point. Uh, 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 if I restrict the wall crossing structure, what I get, I get kind of mm, maybe infinitely many rays uh, uh, where I get, uh, should put my non-trivial transformations mm, and should get elements of some Lie algebras. Uh, uh, so wall crossing on such things. Uh, mm, mm. Ah, just before going on, if consider wall crossing on, on the C star times, I think it's given by, uh, is, is just collection, it's, it's, really, uh, it's a collection of elements of alpha uh, j, this h bar is zero of graded components, of various components, it's just collection of these elements of all possible elements in my uh, grading lattice, such that z u h, z u, whatever, of gamma is not equal to zero. 
Yeah, it's uh, because I, in this situation I don't have any associativity property. Can you describe the just on, on, on kind of copy of R2 minus zero, yeah. I, uh, my walls will be infinitely many rays, and this race will be arguments of such numbers. And there's no, no, no constraints whatsoever in the things. Uh, mm, definition at wall crossing structure on this C star prime U0 uh, has support property. If uh, if there exists a uh, let's say quadratic form on what on my gradient lattice uh, times R uh, such that restriction of quadratic form to the kernel of my map. Uh, which is typically called dimension two subspace, is strictly negative definite, and uh, for any gamma such that alpha gamma is a gamma is non-zero, the quadratic form of gamma is strictly positive. Oh, here is u zero, u zero, yeah. Yeah, so good. Uh, we just make a break soon. Uh, uh, so what, like imagine if uh, my gradient lattice is rank three, for example, rank, or maybe game of gamma zero, it's because I, in part, it's really relevant. Rank of gamma u is three. Yeah, so you get map from z three to c, and uh, so you can kind of imagine kind of like integer points in R three, projects to plane, and this support property means roughly the following: you get point zero, and you consider some kind of cone here. Uh, which surrounds the kernel of projection Z and the support of my, uh, 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 my collection of elements are such only elements of lattice which is, uh, lies in this circle part of the complement. Is it finitely many small gamma or...? Oh, infinitely many. Ah, for all? For all, yeah, for all, yeah, all, yeah. Yeah, so it lies in kind of this discrete set, yeah. Why is this condition? Yeah, it's in various situations because this uh, wall crossing st uh, story appears to various stuff uh, that one can use using some differential geometry. For example, here, um, imagine like, like X is some Keller manifold. And we're interested in gradient lines for real, for uh, interesting gradient lines of uh, oh, real part of exponent of one much bar alpha. Yeah. You consider this, uh, make its vector field, a real vector field, consider uh, gradient lines. And then uh, the claim that integral, uh, this homology class of this, uh, if you bound the length of such a gradient line, you can bound the integral of any form, uh, any closed form, uh, because of some compactness. And eventually translate, you see that you, you cannot, if you bound the length, you, you have only finitely many choices and get some uniform, uniform mm, picture like this. Yeah, so it's some very root, uh, uh, some estimate, it holds in real life. And yeah, so it's one condition. And the second definition, it's wall crossing structure on the same story is analytic. If it has support property, and moreover, norm of a gamma, which is a matrix, essentially, yeah, it's monomial. It's kind of a matrix, uh, is bounded by 
C1 times exponent of C2 times norm of gamma, or you can replace by support property of norm of zero gamma. It's because support property means it's essentially one bounds essentially equivalent. Uh, that's, uh, this bound is uh, more difficult. It's again should fall from differential geometry. It's roughly said that number of gradient lines should grow exponentially. Uh, that's I don't know how to prove uh, directly, but uh, 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 but it's uh, kind of through some kind of back door one can argue that it holds and. Um, uh, maybe for waking break, I just roll, roll, want to go to essential part. Yeah, so it um, uh, looks like an uh, stupid estimates su support and growth. Uh, the claims are falling. Analytic wall crossing structures on, on the same thing uh, can be described in kind of coordinate free language in the following ways. It can be defined in kind of infinitely many ways, uh, depending on some discrete choice, by the following data. So we get matrix valued functions on uh, C star to power n. So let's embed C star to power n, on which is this function, is current y, to some toric variety. And suppose the toric variety contains a chain of CP1s. Kind of chain of CP1, which are toric orbits. So it will be fixed points and it will be one dimensional toric orbits. And then you get some uh, chain which is called C, it will be some non, uh, singular curve. You take some neighborhood, analytic neighborhood neighborhood of, of this chain and I consider um, yeah it'll be a bit sloppy I consider vector bundle ah, maybe it contains uh, 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 kind of have boundary divisor uh, it, it, it still has some divisor with normal crossing around and what I can see is a vector bundle. U, D infinity intersection, U. Is this, you see, it's analytic neighborhood. And consider a vector bundle, how it's called, E, on UC, uh, essentially trivialized on this divisor, uh, whose restriction. D infinity is a complement to the open orbit. Mm, said that restriction to, to this uh, uh, d infinity is identified with some local system which we know a priori uh, because it's homotopy equivalent uh, fundamental group of a neighborhood as Z, so we should describe what is monodromy. Uh, it's uh, we have this beta homology depending on H on the alpha uh, on connected components, but also depends on H bar and H bar they form a local system. Uh, so this local system should be uh, homotopically C star is as of to S1, it's neighborhood of the things it has also a fundamental group. Uh, this analytic wall crossing structure, which is collection of these elements, which is saying support property and the growth, is the same as holomorphic bundle on a neighborhood of this uh, chain of CP1 and some toric variety with some trivialization. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, with some, yeah. Mm. 
Yeah, so, so the, uh, yeah, so it's kind of geometrization of this notion. Uh, but so, but what, what's this direct sum? Why, why do you, uh, I mean, this? Yeah, this matrices here. No, 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 no. Just to be just some abstract data, yeah. which has nothing to do with Ah, this vector bundle should be identified with local system, which come from this direct sum story. Yeah. No, 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 no. Wall crossing structure is this Lie algebra. I have this Lie local system of Lie algebras. And uh, yeah, yeah. So it's a all concrete story. But maybe I think it's time to make some small break here. Uh, if 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 consider this intersection device, I have my uh, uh, the infinity intersection of U C. It's homotopy equivalent. Uh, to my curve C, which is just union of spheres, kind of sphere, union sphere, yeah, okay. Uh, and it's up to, to up to two cells. It's homotopy equivalent to S1, which is homotopy equivalent to C star. And on C star we get <laughs> local system, yeah, so it's... What do you Why is S1? Why is S1? Up to, up to two cells. But uh, this may be, may, be, may be more complicated than the rough, right? No, 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 no. I, 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 I say that it's, it's, it's tor chain of toric CP1. So I get uh, sequence in the wheel. It's a heavy wheel, a closed chain, yeah. In a circle. Ah, uh, what's a chain? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it's, yeah, so, yeah, so it's, uh, the description of local system is a bit complicated. But why is all this happens? Uh, let's uh, just give you uh, some root explanation. So uh, I have this error a minus one right, but uh, have a map from whatever z u is integral of form to c, which is r two. I have a map from lattice, which is kind of z n to r two. I have a additive map. Then consider dual maps from R2 star, which is again kind of R2, to what? To Z and dual times R, which is Rn. I have a dual map, and uh, this can be sort of uh, uh, assume, assume that it's embedding. Uh, So what happens in, in, in kind of in dual space? I have a r real plane, kind of R two sitting in Rn. Now what I do? I cover my plane, uh, but I have also some lattice structure. I cover my plane by uh, convex polyhedral cones. I said that it's R2, which uh, lacks in a union of convex rational cones. And they, uh, there are some conditions, but roughly the picture that it should be kind of, uh, you divide by many small sectors and you cover by small cones around. And mm. if you get such a situation, you have, uh, you get a fan. And if you get a fan, you get a toric variety. This will be my toric variety Y. Uh, it depends on the choice of my uh, convex rational cone. This toric variety will contain naturally chain of P1 because uh, this top degree dimensional cones will correspond to points uh, in toric uh, to zero dimensional orbits. And co dimensional one faces correspond to CP1. So you get automatically at infinity, you get wheel of CP1s. Mm. Okay, uh, but now you do the following. But, but, but this wheel is, is, is not, not a wheel, right? That's some more complicated. No, 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 no. This, I, 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 fixed points are only correspond to. Oh, I don't have any. It's, it will be not complete toric variety. It will be some kind of quasi affine, whatever. Uh, uh, because CP1 corresponds to arrays, right? No, CP1 correspond to co-dimension one faces. 
in, in Turing variance, you get a fan open cones correspond to fixed points at kind of dimensions opposite. And CP1 correspond to co-dimension one faces, so they so, 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 uh, touch each other. And it contains union of CP1. But uh, the table intercept in several, uh, there will be many CP1s intersecting the same point, right? Why is it? No, no, no. CP1s correspond to maybe just, uh, maybe will be other CP1s. Will be for, e for, e for each point, you get two CP1s. It will be left and right petal. I have kind of really kind of essentially two dimensional picture around. I maybe mean, just draw kind of a bit carefully. You get something like this. It corresponds somehow to the intersections of two copies of CP1, like if you have an edge, right? Yeah, it will correspond to, it's correspond to CP1. Yeah, it's, it's infinity will be CP1 kind of transversely, and here will be. Yeah, yeah, so roughly speaking, one can think the following C star to power n maps by logarithm of norms to Rn. And, and if you consider pass in C star to n, which corresponds to pass which goes along this whole uh, open domain, it will converge to one point in, in toric variety. But if you go in the middle, so the limit will be undetermined till the point on CP1. So it gives Yeah, yeah. So we get the toric variety. And now, uh, there is some kind of easy calculation. You get this curve, and you consider formal neighborhood of curve. It's kind of formal scheme, and consider hypercomology of this formal neighborhood with coefficients of the shift of functions which vanish on the divisor at infinity of vanish of the divisor. Consider hypercomology. Consider hypercomology. Oh no, homology decisions with this uh, shift of ideals, and the claim it's, it's zero if i is non equal to one, in and if in H one has basis uh, uh, kind of topological basis corresponding to integer points, non-zero integer points in gamma. Uh, supported on something like this in, in, in this complement. So you can see the kind of dual cones, take union and take calculate cohomology, you get exactly H1 and no other cohomology around. M maybe I'll just give you some simple example. Suppose my lattice is, uh, I really t take care of vectors. Uh, vectors uh, in gamma satisfying support property for certain quadratic form or in I integer points are points in gamma satisfying support property yeah yeah so it's really easy calculation with uh, cohomology I can sh show maybe uh, just really stupid example for suppose my lattice is z and uh, just two dimensions, so I don't really have this projection. But I still, I need a, a fan, yeah? And my fan will be, uh, this will be my fan in Z2. I get just four domains. Uh, so the variety is, corresponding variety is CP1 cross CP1. You get kind of zero infinity. Support property, it means that it belongs to some set uh, uh, which may be bounded by uh, quadratic form. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so this quadratic form was a little bit ugly thing, so there, is, there exists a constant. Yeah. Is it something like what you wrote there, the condition? Yes, on quadratic form, yeah. On the quadratic form, but the, what is the, ga the gamma? Yeah. If you want the point in gamma. Yeah, point in Yeah. Not the quadratic. I don't know. No, each one, each, each one, each one has a basis corresponding to set of points in gamma, yes. which are kind of possible uh, candidates by the support property when a gamma is not zero. Ah, that is that like Q gamma is positive. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, possible. Oh, okay. Yeah. You, you, at some point, you divide by, by the one constant. No, no, no. There's no plan constant. I discuss this. No, you see, it's isomorphism of local system. It's a local system on S one, which yeah. is identified with a local system which depends on. Oh, maybe you're right. Because maybe you divide by by plan constant. Uh, plan constant will be uh, argument. 
Ah, Planck constant will be z of z u of gamma. Yeah, let me just click this. Your vector in, in my gamma z. My my lattice, uh, my uh, uh, gamma is vector in my lattice. Uh, yeah, for, you can see the vectors in my lattice, uh, for which uh, which is a support property, and and consider. Mm. No, no. Here, here I don't have anything. No, no. Here it's, it's clear. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, and uh, yeah, one can make simple calculation. For example, yeah. Just you don't want me to jump between two things. I have a fan, so variety is CP one. I can see the kind of neighborhood of a, uh, this wheel of CP one, which is not a fine surface. It's not a fine surface. It's and uh, even neighborhood. Uh, uh, and the only functions are constant. And and functions vanishing on these things. Have no will be have only first homology, and one calculate kind of using some covering check covering, and uh, essentially what happens in a uh, lattice vector. So you can see the maybe integer points in half this half plane, this half plane, this half plane, and this half plane, and remove uh, it will be one part of check complex, and others will be octants, and then then we get all non-zero points here. Yeah, so something similar happens in high dimension. Mm. Of course, here we have a lot of choice. We can make a smaller fan here, and on all space we get a larger uh, support, and eventually we can cover a support property by this thing. So it will be some ambiguity. So it's not a unique description, but there are many ways to describe in this space. And you compare two different ways by some blow ups. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so you kind of replace, uh, uh, and this is kind of. Uh, uh, this is a basic uh, thing from which all follows, because if you consider deformation theory for this question, we get vector bundle in neighborhood, but uh, trivialize somewhere, but now, now we start to deform it. Because it's deformed by something trivial on the divisor, so it will be matrix valid function vanishing on the divisor. And deformation theory is given by H1, this on level of tangent space. And so you get exactly the same data as for uh, uh, this. Uh, Elements of my matrices uh, respond to monomials belonging to uh, such a domain, and then one can make it really globally. And this convergence, this growth condition that uh, there was some analytic property, implies that it can go to form from power from power series to actual neighborhood. It's one to one correspondence. Okay, so yeah, so you get some kind of bizarre analytic spaces which are neighborhood of uh, wheels of CP ones. And uh, now, if we move point and want to satisfy support property, uh, we have this associativity laws for wall crossing when things go together. Yeah, it's all complicated business. Uh, and, and then associativity law for wall crossing structure is equivalent to the following thing. That this bundle stay the same. You see, see, you see some E stay locally the same. But what we change? We change embedding of R2 to Rn. <laughs> How, when we identify the things with this wall crossing structure. We, but analytic object st stays the same. But then if you go to different domain, maybe we can use different fields, we make some blow ups. Ah, but uh, that's uh, Roughly the picture of what happens. Now, so the, all this uh, uh, complicated wall think uh, are embedded to some com complete kind of nice analytic language. You get holomorphic bundle in some open variety. Yeah, kind of uh, kind of uh, local system just identification. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Now I'll just will be very brief. Now we want to jump to infinite dimensions. Yeah, yeah, F uh, yeah. Some people were not present on last talk, so but I cannot really help with this. Yeah. Uh, what I explained that uh, uh, for some infinite dimensional varieties, one can try to calculate 
this holomorphic conforms, one can try to define all the structure without definition what a global drum homology and so on, using just this wall crossing business. And the basic example was the following. I have a holomorphic symplectic manifold. And I have two Lagrangian complex Lagrangian submanifolds. Again, holomorphic Lagrangian submanifolds. And my space is, will be infinite dimensional. It will be space of pass with endpoints on my Lagrangians. And one form is closed one form on X, infinity infinity is given to integral of two form over the pass in some obvious sense yeah that's a closed one form mm. yeah there's also some issue of orientation and so on uh, and eventually one should uh, we, we should get get homology depending on h bar which is holomorphic in each bar C star using these walls. And if one have isomonodromic deformation, one should expect a flat connection. You get some parameter space, whole thing depend on parameter, and get flat connection in U holomorphically depending on H bar. Okay. Yeah, so that's uh, what one should expect naively. What is capital H H bar? Ah, uh, so what we use, we, we use uh, vanishing cycles for intersection points, and then we should use wall crossing structure coming from pass in pass space, kind of gradient lines, which we say is holomorphic disks and all this complicated story. And what is example of isomonoromic deformation? Should the word should age? No. Uh, should have, uh, should have, maybe. No, this kind of object? Uh, should have a holomorphic bundle. Ah, holomorphic bundle. Vector bundle on C star, yeah. Ah, which is constructed using the... All these walls, yeah, which you have. Constructing using wall crossings, should have wall crossing structures and all this business. Because critical points of uh, zeros of h bar, zeros of a infinity, are constant maps are identified with a, its finite dimensional space. Iso, then it's iso. Iso, for, uh, if you have isomonoramic deformation, yeah. And what is example of isomonoramic deformation? It's the following. If my manifold is cotangent bundle, then omega is differential of Liouville form. Uh, Mm, L not, not exact, but uh, L1 will be, L1 depending on a point, will be cotangent space to the point and uh, X and U will be X. Okay, parameter space will be, uh, so we have uh, cotangent space to X, we'll have L0 and intersect with uh, some vertical one x and start to move this L1. So then you should have a bundle on C star cross U? Yeah, I should get a bundle on C star U, on a bundle, should have bundle on C star cross uh, x, which is uh, holomorphic here and flat here. Mm. Uh, some kind of this holomorphic float homology. Yeah, it's all this very nice, and we want to try to see how it will work. And then one have a very interesting trouble. Mm, because in the definition of all crossing structure, one consider something like gradient lines for this one form, which will be holomorphic disks, pseudo-holomorphic disks. So we are interested in general in pseudo-holomorphic disk related maybe L0 and maybe L1, and maybe depending on point U. And we have these holomorphic disks. And they are in general isolated, but in one parameter frame we get some boundary, and boundary with space of disks. 
uh, has uh, uh, the disk can degenerate to sequence of two disks, uh, which is responsible in wall crossing picture to the rule. Uh, if you remember something like we have kind of number of the disk with jump jump by uh, the things, you get kind of product here, which correspond to product in this picture uh, of two compositions. But uh, you get some new phenomenon which is you never see in finite dimensions. New phenomenon. Boundary of space of disks, if you want to prove that all associated to things, will not hold. Also contains also another type, type of boundaries. And could have uh, uh, such degenerate disks it can appear. B bubbles from yeah, from the boundary, yeah. R real bubbles from the boundary, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it's, uh, it's a, a tr trouble. So we get a trouble uh, uh, comes individually from, from L0 or, or from L1 because it means that you have holomorphic disk with the boundary on L0. Yeah, it never happens in two situations for L. Uh, so, so there's no disks uh, with uh, holomorphic disk with the boundary to the holomorphic disk with the boundary on L and uh, area is strictly positive area in two situations. If L is exact. Yeah, so uh, in my last lecture, I explained the case of exact L, and uh, then my uh, one form was differential of a function. Mm. When L is exact, so it means that we ex express two, f two forms differential of one form, and one form on L is differential of some function. Yeah. Yeah, it means that M is exact and uh, L is exact, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's some structure, it's not a property, it means that M is exact, and so on. Uh, so, why the integral is zero? If considered uh, 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 integral of the omega of the disk, uh, is integral over d omega of, of any disk, is integral of omega of the boundary of the disk is integral of df of the disk and is zero by Stokes theorem. Mm. But area is, uh, is the following situation. Uh, area is a real part of one over each bar of integral of omega of the disk. Yes, yeah, so we get a contradiction. For, for, for any pseudo-holomorphic disk, the area is, should be strictly positive, but it's zero. Yeah, so it's one case. But there is another case which is also funny. Second case is when M is cotangent bundle. L is a graph of closed one form. Mm. Then the integral again is zero, but by different reasons. Because you get integral of a disk of form omega. The beginning is the same as integral of d eta over omega over disk. In the integral over eta over boundary disk, it's integral to the alpha over you get projection from cotangent bundle to x itself, you get projection uh, of a uh, projection of dd. Yeah. It's integral of d alpha over projection of d. And this is 0 because d alpha is 0. Yeah. yeah so it's kind of 
the end is different. <laughs> the beginning of the argument is the same, but the ending is mm, slightly different. Yeah, so there's a completely different story, which, which explains that in f for the case of one form, one can go to the infinite dimension story or finite dimension story, it will be the same business. So I claim this is kind of six things with uh, disk and so on, it's, uh, it will be the same as finite dimension integral in my story. Yeah, but in general, uh, except of these two exceptions, uh, except this uh, kind of closed one form or exact thing, we should get this trouble. And uh, what is what's the meaning of this story? Yeah, so, so what, what, what's go what goes on? Yeah, H how to understand uh, the wall crossing structure? Uh, it looks that like everything will br break, uh, will, will be broken. But uh, nice, uh, this explanation of what happens, it's claim we will get wall crossing structure in a larger Lie algebra. Yeah. We have this previous Lie algebra. But we have now Lie, a larger Lie algebra. Uh, so, so before we have this guy, uh, before we see the trouble, we have this, this Lie algebra. But after the trouble, I think we, we should understand uh, we have, have different Lie algebra, kind of matrix uh, uh, new Lie algebra. It's, it's kind of. Uh, old Lie algebra and to take semi-direct product with vector fields on torus. Yeah, these are matrix valued functions on a torus. Or maybe j m to power n. And these are vector fields on a torus. Uh, you consider also add, add vector fields. Mm, uh, so new gamma graded component will be something like this. We take y to power gamma uh, and you take maybe y i times d u d y it will be uh, a basis of new graded components of the larger Lie algebra it's again graded by lattice by the same, essentially by the same lattice and um, Yeah, so it's kind of claim what is going on, and and I explained you before you had kind of theorem how to identify wall crossing structure on a C star times point as a vector bundle. Uh, so, so before analytic wall crossing structure on C star cross a point was the same as. Uh, uh, holomorphic bundle on some neighborhood of a, of a chain of CP1s plus some uh, trivialization or identification on some divisor. Uh, but now I think uh, 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 now uh, one can kind of repeat the whole story. This analytical crossing structure with largely algebra will be the same as Holomorphic bundle on on kind of some uh, uh, on, on something else, not not on a, not a neighborhood of a chain of field toric varieties, but just some complex manifold, which is contains a field of uh, CP ones can, and have some stratification, uh, maybe some trivialization, and just in the first order coincide with historic variety. But then you modify by some, because vector fields are give, uh, you change coordinates in your mm. Mm, different patches and glue a new manifold. Yeah, so it's, uh, mm, yeah, yeah in, in some sense one can say that it's, I mean before we have holomorphic bundles, we have only gauge theory, but now we have gravity, <laughs> kind of dimorphism group, yeah, so it's, uh, Mixture of two. Uh, you see modified. It's uh, 
com uh, it's a germ of complex, it's a uh, complex analytic variety which contains wheel of CP1s and it's stratified uh, like toric variety. Uh, and uh, maybe normal bundles to strata are trivialized to this um, to the CP1 to keep kind of first derivative. And the rest will be uh, uh, the same. Yeah, so you get some kind of, and uh, if you move all crossing structure, you locally do not change this guy. Uh, now that's essentially what Gajot and Murnetsky kind of discovered. It was something called 4D. Netsky, uh, uh, they call something 2D, 4D wall crossing uh, structure, and 4D was for, d for diffeomorphisms, or maybe symplectomorphisms, in fact, in real life. And here it, it uh, was previous things with um, matrix valued functions. For physics, you can say it's Chicotti Waff uh, something, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so no, so it looks like uh, kind of, I said it's, uh, ex it's not, uh, uh, that this trouble with the extra disks are in, uh, eventually encoded to some little bit larger uh, uh, Lie algebra. Yeah, but uh, uh, yeah, in fact, this uh, one can. Uh, uh, Check it formally, uh, but uh, uh, this should be, uh, I can give you some kind of rough explanation of uh, where it happens. why we should have these changes of coordinates appearing from nowhere. Uh, yeah, if you get m omega and h bar, then we can associate a real symplectic manifold. It will be m, real part of 1 of h bar omega, and add something called B field, which will be just closed, purely imaginary form, which will be I times imaginary part of 1 of H bar omega. So we get symplectic manifold plus purely imaginary closed form. And in such situation, again, one should expect something like Foucault category. Uh, uh, what roughly is this Foucault category? Objects are uh, Lagrangian submanifolds in M, uh, kind of omega real, Lagrangian with respect to real form, plus bundles with connection on Lagrangian manifold, such that curvature of the connection will be uh, B field, kind of B. B field multiplied by identity operator. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's a uh, uh, rough definition of the object. And Holmes are intersection points. Uh, or at intersection points maybe take Holmes between bundles. Uh, and uh, then it's also the A infinity category. Again, consider you consider some holomorphic disks. Uh, take some of holomorphic disks and to integrate this. Uh, you get sum over disk integral of over disks omega plus b kind of e, b, yeah. uh, re, uh, real. Yeah, you have real symplectic manifold with the form. Uh, then one can make try to make this for k category. And naively, it looks like it get kind of holomorphic family of categories in H bar. Of categories. Yeah, that's uh, a rough, rough point. But now let's consider L0, L1 are holomorphic Lagrangians.
Some of all holomorphic, uh, holomorphic disks, uh, there will be contribution some infinity terms. Yeah, it's long. It's a really long story. If you don't know it, it's a bit too late to explain right now. Uh, you get this. Uh, you get this. Uh, 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 you get this trouble. Now we have two holomorphic Lagrangian manifolds, and. Uh, ah, just bef before going on, I, I want to say the following. In fact, here, uh, one ca in this Fouquet categories, one can get a trouble. L and E connection is not an object uh, if there is something M0 non trivial if some M0 is present, M0 uh, is responsible for holomorphic disks. If th there exists holomorphic disk for some, some uh, another complex structure compatible with the real, such that boundary of the disk belongs to the M uh, to L and area is positive. Yeah, such such things destroy objects in Fouquet category. And it's a well known thing that holomorphic disk bounded on and but but pseudo holomorphic disks for some kind of another structure, maybe it's some kind of J holomorphic disks. And uh, in illustration, we start with complex symplectic manifold. Say for simplicity, it's hyper Keller manifold. Uh, the fact is, uh, it's easy to see that uh, such holomorphic disks, because the structure depends on H bar, do not exist for almost all H bar. For H bar argument H bar not equal to argument of an integral of two form over some uh, some kind of class of the disk belongs to relative pi two and L holomorphic. Yeah, for L holomorphic, you can uh, this E will be flat bundle. Uh, uh, there is no such disk. Yeah, so it means that one can put as object of a category arbitrary holomorphic Lagrangian arbitrary local system. It will be not abstracted object of Fouquet category. Mm, now, if we ha one have two two guys, uh, and you try to calculate homes between uh, uh, get. Another thing, you get two objects of Fouquet category. You, when you want to calculate Holmes, uh, you should calculate uh, uh, things coming from intersection, but also will be differential coming from M1, from holomorphic disks. And again, holomorphic disks do not, will not exist except for countably many bad directions, by the same reasons. Because... Uh, yeah, so it looks as for generic direction of H bar, you get very nice things. You get a uh, list of object of categories, some uh, object of categories. You know, homes are identified with uh, local vanishing cycles. Mm. But then, if you cross the wall, something sh bad should happen. Yeah, uh, category depends holomorphically. And uh, nobody says that if you have uh, your object, if you cross the wall, you get the same object given by the same data. So it means that, for example, consider local rank one local systems, you should kind of change of coordinates. So it means that uh, you introduce uh, outside of walls, you introduce coordinates in space of some uh, domain space of objects, but now you change coordinates. And this will be different reasons which come from, uh, from this uh, story. Yeah, and eventually, uh, yeah, and, and, and also with Holmes you get these jumps with identification. Yeah, so it's all kind of morally follows from consideration in Fouquet category where you get diffeomorphisms. And eventually we should give kind of a uh, new definition of what is new definition of resurgent functions. I'll just uh, try to do 
kind of try to explain it in most naive term. Yes, yeah, so, so you get um, uh, you see this our Lie algebra is, is built from two pieces. You get a change of coordinates and uh, matrices. And what happens is the following. The search function, some function in one variable, um, divergent functions. Yeah, mm. uh, so one should, uh, there are kind of uh, two st steps in a Riemann-Hilbert problem. First, we should kind of even imagine we have kind of finitely many rays, and we get some variable y1, yn. And uh, the first problem is the following. Find functions y, y of h bar, where h bar doesn't belong to Stokes rays, and satisfying some wall crossing along the way, uh, uh, satisfying, some, satisfying some conditions cross along the way. The typical condition is the following. Suppose you get two functions y1, y2. Here it's kind of minus and here's plus. And suppose, for example, y, y2 minus is equal to y2 plus, but y1 mi minus uh, is equal to y1 minus times 1 plus exponent 1 of h bar, <laughs> maybe y2, y2 minus. Uh, so you have functions on uh, maybe two functions here, two functions here, and uh, if you uh, consider jumps, they are given by such formulas. It's a typical wall crossing transformation. Y one minus. Well, it's kind of exponential decaying guy in h bar. Yeah. So you get uh, questions like this. So y one plus is not present at all. Ah, one plus. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Jump. Yeah, this is a little bit uh, kind of non-linear part of jump formula, but then you get jump formula for integrals. It's uh, how we parameterize local system, but also we should int uh, parameterize integrals, and we get something like y y minus is equal to y y j with some different indices. You get something like whatever y j uh, plus maybe plus some again, 1h one, one bar, again multiplied by exponent 1h bar times yk plus something like this. You get, uh, then you get uh, um, secondary uh, wall crossing uh, formulas for uh, matrix part of my Lie algebra. And, and if you consider solutions uh, in, on, in, on any of this guy, h bar will be function depending only on sectors. But asymptotic expansion uh, and h bar will have kind of finite limit. Limit h bar, h bar used. Yeah, so, so you get some uh, form power series expansion. This form power series expansion doesn't depend on, on the st stock sector because it changed by things with zero tail coefficients. Yeah, so you get some universal divergent series, some class of divergent series in one variable. And, uh, can, uh, and it's, I think it follows from all the geometries that you can prove that they are Borel summable. And uh, if you make Laplace transform, uh, so you make something like C over nj over n factorial, uh, maybe some dual variable, some kind of t to power n. It will have endless analytic continuation with countably many singularities, so people, what people expect for uh, resurgent functions. Yeah, but uh, this I want to expect, expe uh, I think it's the, uh, the project we have is Jan to extract it just for this geometric description. We get analytic variety, which is neighborhood of chain of CP1s and analytic vector bundle in the neighborhood, and then the series will follow from nothing. Okay. Wh which, on which data will it depend? Yeah, it should depend on uh, essentially this uh, uh, deformation of complex structure in neighborhood of a wheel CP1s and deformation of vector bundles in this neighborhood. Yeah, so it will be some co coordinate free in sense description. And okay, thank you. <laughs>